one now. New Japan coach. New beginning in Hiroshima, New Japan Pro Wrestling. The show literally just wrapped up not even 15 minutes ago, maybe even a little bit longer. So we're fresh off of it, man. SOS Wrestling Network, back at you guys here for the live reactions, man. It's your boy, Starter Shiaku, joined by my good brother, LK, man. Boy, LK, what, what a show we had this morning, man. Absolutely, what a show. Um, really, really enjoyed that. Um, absolutely mental. Um, like, yeah, dude, it was... Honestly, it was, oh my God. Um, I, I want to apologize to everyone uh, firsthand before we get down to breaking down this show. Um, myself and Dion, obviously in different time zones, so different sleeping patterns, etc. I set my alarm for nine, where I'm kind of on the American sleeping pattern, where I've been going to bed at kind of five-ish. Um, I went to bed at 5 a.m. I woke up at 10.15, which is an hour and 15 minutes into the show. So I've watched the two... Tag t- the tag title match as well as the IWGP Junior Weight title match in the main event, but I did not catch the undercard, but Dion caught the undercard and then we're not going to come on here and lie to you. We're not going to be like, oh, we watched everything and just read results. But Dion, you're going to have to guide me through. Guide me through as if I've never watched this show before. Man, absolutely. I can go ahead and guide you through this, LK, as if you've never watched the show. So the first match we had on this new beginning in Hiroshima was a six-man tag team match. We had the team of Gabriel Kidd, Yuri Yamura, and Yoda Suji. Taking you on the team, the trio, the Suzuki Gun Trio of Yoshinobu Kanemaru, El Desperado, and Minoru Suzuki right here. So, Yuya Yamura did something that no pro wrestler should probably ever do, yet alone, let, a, let alone a young lion. This man interrupted Minoru Suzuki before he even got the Kazan Ninai air off in his entrance. This like, I'm like, oh wow, Yamura is out here and he has a death wish. And that's pretty interesting to see in the morning when you see somebody that just wants to die in a very not very long career. So that was pretty interesting right there. He brought the fight to Suzuki the whole match. And I even tweeted out, I was like, if they wanted to run Minoru Suzuki versus Yura Yamura at uh, uh, Castle Attack, I would not be mad at it because Yura Yamura is very fiery right now. Maybe the most fiery young line we got at this point, but I mean, that could be arguable right here. Yoda Suji, Gabriel Kidd did their great things as well. And we said yesterday on the you know preview show, this match could have potentially gave Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado maybe a claim to challenge for the junior heavyweight tag straps. I mean, they have a claim after Suzuki Gun wins this match with the Boston Crab because Minoru Suzuki actually submits Yuya Yamura with a Boston Crab, but not before Yuya Yamura actually put Suzuki in his own Boston Crab. So it's kind of like this dude's really playing with fire right here. He's just really, he really wants to get fucked up out here. So. He got his wish. He got submitted in about eight minutes right here. Minoru Suzuki, of course, not taking a light on him during the match nor after the match. So, yeah, this was a nice, solid opener. And like I said, I would not be mad at LK to see Minoru Suzuki and Yuya Yamura one-on-one and then at Castle Attack. I'm so used to saying Invasion Attack because that was one of their cards. <laughs> why why did they you know? changed it from Invasion Attack to Castle Attack? Because what, what, this is I the think, first time they've ever done it. Well, I think they changed it from Invasion Attack because... I think the Invasion Attack, once they, which is a great show name, by the way, yeah. uh, I think they were running that. It was uh, around, along the time where Suzuki Gun kind of was taking, you know, taking over New Japan, and that's when Bullet Club became more prominent and everything. So the Invasion Attack name kind of fit more for the time being, right there, and even Los and Gobernables, so it kind of fit more. But I just think it's a cool name. They could have just kept it, but whatever. So the yeah. next match we got <clears throat> was a highly touted singles match. Here it was. 20-minute time limit, we had Master Waddle attempting to wrestle victory away from the champion of the damn universe, Jet Black Death Mask himself, Bushi, right here. And we even talked about it yesterday on the pre-show. Like, could have lost right here necessarily negate Master Waddle's uh, momentum that he's had? And I don't really necessarily think it did because Master Waddle actually ended up taking the Elder Bushi in a pretty solid match in about a little over eight minutes. He ate the MX, and to my surprise, Bushi won right here. So the two... There were two tight in our opinions. There were two title implications when you include the first match to junior heavyweight tag titles and maybe here with the junior heavyweight title. There were implications right here, but maybe they were kind of misplaced different because they both those matches did have title implications, but they actually ended up very, very different in how they played out as the night, you know, you know, unfolded. But we get Bushi getting the victory right here. And then after he gets the victory, okay, he's like picking up Master Wado and you think he's going to go ahead and help him, you know, hey, you know, good victory. You got in the ring, that was good. You know, if you thought he was going to do some stuff like that. But he picks him up, those matter. He's doing this literally in front of Tenzan. Tenzan's like in the ring while he's doing this. So it's pretty hilarious. And then Bushi kind of like, you know, powders out because he's being the heel here. But I thought this was a good match. I really did. And 
it, when, as this match was happening and the result happened, I was like, hmm, these guys are probably going to be placed in the best of the Super Junior. If they don't leave, if they run more than one bracket, they definitely are going to be placed in the best Super Junior. And we that's where we probably might get that Master Waddle victory over Bushi because it's like, okay, I think they maybe faced off in this past year. And I think Bushi got the dub. I could be wrong. But if Bushi got the dub, then you already got the storyline right there. He's already beaten Master Waddle twice. And it's up to Master Waddle if they match up in the Super Juniors to if he wants to progress, he's probably going to have to beat Bushi at some point. So that was a good match for what it was, you know, for the time that they were given. And that's probably about as long as this match should have went. Then uh, after that, okay, how, we so, had sorry, how, how long? How long did it go? And do you recommend for me to go back and actually check, check okay, this one yeah. out? Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Definitely check this one out here. It okay. went a little over 11 minutes okay. when it was a little over 11 minutes. So it wasn't anything too, too long. But yeah, I would definitely say go ahead and check it out. It's probably one of Master Wado's best outings since he's been back here over in New Japan. I, I enjoyed the singles match. So, okay, <clears> excuse me. I'm I'm really shocked that again. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the main event because I'm I'm just really surprised that this in in reality wasn't a number one contenders match. But we'll we'll talk to that when we get back. We'll get on to yeah, that. We'll talk, yeah, like you would you would think that it would be how the card play, was playing out, but yeah, it's kind of not. It's kind of interesting, and I'm kind of glad they actually went another route because we were talking about oh, which where they're gonna go. So I'm actually kind of glad they went the route that we didn't think about. Um, a next match we had was a 10-man tag right here. It was the Chaos Team, Toroyano, Yoshihashi, Hiroki Goto, Tomohiro Ishii, and Kapuchiko Okada taking on the Bullet Club five-man team of El Fantasmo, Taji Ishimori, Yujiro Takahashi, Jay White, and Evil right here. So we got Jay White and Tomohiro Ishii. They're paired off. We got the Never Open Trios match tomorrow for the titles. Um, Okada got some more stuff with you. This match was decent. This match was okay. They were pretty much working over Yoshihashi a lot of this match, and they were kind of hammering home the fact that uh, they were talking about the commentators or whatever, and they were saying that maybe it's... Elfin, they were talking about maybe they were, they're kind of maybe taking a step back from having wrestlers be at the commentary table, but Elfin, or like Kevin Kelly had said, Elfin Tazma said that, was, that wasn't the reason that he was retiring from commentary is because he was just, you know, being pretty much just being a heel. It's like, nah, I don't want to do it no more. So that's why he was saying that he was retiring from commentary. It's like, nah, I, I just don't want to do it anymore. So I thought that was actually a nice uh, touch from Kevin Kelly, which would not be him retiring because Elfin Tazma will be back on the commentary table here very, very shortly, I think, after this match right here. So yeah, this was all right. This match went about 12 minutes. This was actually, I think we predicted this result correctly, but it just was not the person we thought was going to get pinned. Yudro got pinned by Toro Yano, 12 minutes and eight seconds. Uh, if, I would say if watch this, if only you were, if you're just like, all right, I need to see some some Bullet Club stuff and I need to see more of uh, Jay White, Ishii pair off before that never open weight six man title match. You want to see that? I would say watch this. But it's not necessarily anything you would have to go out of your way to watch because I think that six man trios match would do service to that tomorrow morning. So you don't necessarily have to watch this match. But it, it was what it was. It was okay. Okay, that's cool. I'm glad um glad they're carrying on the build for this title match tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to um Absolutely. that never open weight six man tag titles, beyond belief. Like I'm really excited. As I can't believe I'm about to say this. I'm more excited for the Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Titles than I am for the fucking heavyweight title match. Absolutely ridiculous. You are not alone in that boat, my friend, because I am as well. And another match right here, I, I'm just being honest, this is another tag team match. We got Tamaki Homa attempting to make his last chance special singles match with Tetsuya Naito. Teaming up the double champion himself, Kota Bushi. So maybe that'll rub some luck off on him. Taking on the team of Los Ingobernables de Japones. Ellen Gopinabla, Tetsu Unido, and the current number one contender, Cold Skull Sonata, right here. And it was actually funny while I was scrolling Instagram while the, they were making her entrances. And uh, Sonata actually had a Instagram post where he was like literally like in like a one of those like cry, kind of cryogenic ice baths or whatever. And I'm like, literally the Cold Skull right here. They look at him. He's literally the Cold Skull. He's in a cryogenic ice bath, for God's sake. So he's That's literally the Cold Skull here. <laughs> you know? Now, dude, now, dude here's, 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 the, here's the biggest question that's on my mind, and I'm very interested in the answer to this one. Because this was, I think, the last match that I didn't see. So I think I joined it just at live, the live stream just after this match finished. Was there build for Sonata and Kota Ibushi? You know what? Okay, I think the match yesterday that we covered, the time limit draw, did more service. Oh, what do you mean more? It did nothing yesterday on uh, on the oh, eighth. 
Oh, I'm real good at this. Like, they kind of were, you know, kind of jawing back and forth where Sonata and Kota Ibushi, but I think the match yesterday did more than this match actually did. I know they had to wrestle this match because, you know, they're not they're not having a title match on this show. They're having it tomorrow, but I don't know. To me, this match seemed less about them challenging for the titles tomorrow, more about how am I trying to get the, you know, special singles match with Tetsuya Naito, which he was not able to get because, like we said yesterday, this man took a Destino flat flush, and now his hopes are over right here. And this, like I said, this you could probably skip this match as well. If, unless oh, don't you worry. Like I, 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 there, I have zero intention of going back and watching this match because it just triggers yeah. me. I want to actually kind yeah. of kind of look forward to the, the heavyweight title match tomorrow. I can't believe the build. I cannot believe the build. I've never seen a build this bad. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's like you might be right. One of the worst builds for a heavyweight title match if in a long time, if not fucking ever. But, I mean, you know, of course, people will say we're nitpicking doing stuff like that. But it is it's what not, it is. It's, not, just... it's not nitpicking. It's, it's if you've watched all the Roto shows and you've, you know, we're coming on here. Yeah, we're being a bit negative about the match. It could be a great match. If it's a great match tomorrow, we're going to come on here and say it's a great match. But the build yeah. and the the fact that you know that every other match on the show, you know the junior heavyweight the junior heavyweight match was built really well, and you also have the never point six man tag title match, which has been built fucking great. It's you can't come on here and just say everything's awesome when it's not. It's like at the end of the day, the build was terrible. Like who in those buildings at Kurikan or watching on njpwl.com were like, oh yeah 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 that that Ibushi Sonata was that build was great. There no 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 one there is doing that. Yeah, I haven't seen anything on Twitter talking about. Oh man, I, I'm just I'm ready for this. I, I like let yet to see that on there. It uh, yeah, it's I don't know. It's yeah, it's, I'm kind of agreeing with you. This might be this is a very lackluster build. It might be the work. So yeah, um, but no, this you can definitely skip this match, man. And I'm kind of just ready for them to get past the Sonata Bushi feud at this point. This is this is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and and like I said, I can't wait for this Sonata and Ibushi stuff to be over because I never want to see him wrestle ever again. Like I don't care. Like I've can never. I can't believe it. It's just it's something I'd expect out of E. Like I wouldn't anticipate a build for a main event to be this bad. Oh man, and I'm disappointed. I thought they're going to go balls to the wall tonight or this morning, whenever the fuck you're watching this to kind of get people invested, but. They chose the Hon the Honma route. Let's build Honma and Naito, a match that's not even fucking taking place. I'm glad you mentioned the ELK because, as you said, I'm actually more excited and more intrigued about who's Edge going to wrestle WrestleMania than I am this title match tomorrow. So <laughs> it is. I mean, I, I'm just. I, I, I wouldn't go that far. That's a, I mean, I've taken some shots at them over the past few days, but I wouldn't go that far. No way. Edge is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, though. So that is that is, is what it is. So yeah. I'm just, I'm more excited for that than I am for this, but I'm not really excited for that either. But it is what it is. But uh, something, you know, all jokes aside, something that did get me excited and I was very pumped up, and I think you were as well, was the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Title match we're getting on this night. And what we got, we got the challengers, Dangerous Techers, attempting to get their titles back from the team that defeated them, the Grills of Destiny, attempting to make their first defense right here. And we were going back and forth to how this match was going to play out, okay? we Because we were like, man, either one of these teams could have, honestly, in my opinion, I don't think could have afforded a loss right here because you have Dangerous Techers get pinned. I don't say clean because you know how Grills of Destiny wrestle. But if you have Dangerous Techers take the pinfall or submission here and just kind of wipe them out of the title challenge, it kind of is like, oh, well, damn, who else do you have for these guys to wrestle off with? And if you just have Dangerous Techers take the belts off of Grills to Destiny, I kind of felt like it, in a way, stifled. They're not killed, but it would stifle their momentum. They just had kind of pretty much coming back off of the pandemic and whatnot. So I'm like, uh, you're kind of in a hard place right here. And there's this almost a very much a tale of two matches, in my opinion. The first part of this match, you had Taichi pretty much just getting the shit kicked out of him. They're playing mind games with him as Tamatong. He has different bags with various types of gloves and bras and just various items in there. So, you know, it was just like, man, all the mind games are getting heavy right here. And Taiji taking a beating, which is weird to see Taiji be that baby face and pair off. That was actually extremely weird, but he did pretty well in that role, in my honest opinion. Maybe it started off kind of slow to this match, but once it started to pick up and once we started getting to that second half, once we started getting like Zack Sabre, you know, once Zack Sabre made that first hot tag, I'm like, okay, it's starting to pick up a little bit and it did pick up. So 
we got some nice double team sequences here. Uh, dangerous Techers, man. Taiji and Zack Sabre Jr., I was saying that the whole year, at least in my opinion, definitely my favorite tag team of 2020, maybe the best tag team of 2020. I know, I mean, it, I'm, you know, it's whatever, but Dangerous Techers are definitely one of the best tag teams in the world that really nobody says. So I think that needs to be said right there. And the sequence, LK, man, once the Iron Glove finally came into play, oh, Taiji, dude. That was so good. This was that. That was so good. And of course, we got to tell you the result. The result was a disqualification. I'm totally fine with the disqualification. Uh, see, see, I, 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 I'm going to be different for you. I'm going to be. Yeah, but let, gonna let me tell you, why. you give let your opinion. You why. Yeah, give your opinion and I'll, I'll run. I'll tell you why I'm fine with it because I was saying, I, I don't know if you really, either one of these teams could afford a quote unquote clean loss. So. Maybe it shouldn't have went if they're going to go with this finish. It probably shouldn't have went 29 minutes because you assume that when a match goes as long, you're going to have a decisive finish. But also, I love that, too, because it plays into our pro wrestling tropes to where we expect the match to go away and it didn't go the way that we expected. And normally I'd be like, oh, DQ finish is kind of cheap. That's kind of lame. But. I just love that Taichi was so incensed and he just became literally possessed by this object to where he didn't know where the fuck he was. He's about to attack his teammates. He's attacking referee. And it's, it's kind of a, not a normal disqualification situation, in my opinion. He's just going literally at this. He, he wanted to get this thing back so bad. And it, this literally possessed him. And it just literally just overtook his body. And I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of fine with that because it's like, yeah, it might be a cop out, you know, way for the D, DQ. But the way the DQ unfolded, I'm fine with. I, I disagree. I, I think the, the match itself was fucking great. Um, really, really good. Um, the actual match itself. Uh, the finish, like you said, when, when Taichi puts the glove on and it's like he's possessed by Izuka and he's there hitting everybody. Fucking great. But what you could have had, what could have had him done is, you know, do the Gado with the kendo, uh, Jado with the kendo stick. Bam! Hit him over the back. He's a no sell and bam! Hits him. And then hits Tonga lower. And then from behind, you could have had uh, Tama Tonga Roll, uh, in, uh, roll them up, quick roll up, pull up the tights, hold on to the ropes, one, two, three, and then he can have Tamatonga and Tonga Lo get the fuck out of there, which is, again, like getting out of dodge, putting over how mental uh, Taichi is. And then he could have done the same thing. Taichi could have got the, kept, as he still got hold of the, cl- the, the claw, he could have then still hit everybody. So you could have had the exact same thing happen, just Tamatonga or Tonga Lo, whichever fucking one you want to do. Roll them up, pull the tights, get some heel heat on those heels because, you know, them being sneaky bastards, they still retain the titles. You have a clean finish esque. And the DQ just pissed me off, man. It was like, I invested 20, I don't know how long it was. It felt like 20 plus minutes long. And it ended in DQ, man. Like, no, 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 no. You literally could have just had Tabatonga roll up and the exact, everything else could remain exactly the same. The Taichi, even to the point where he's trying to hit fellow Suzuki Gun uh, Kanemoru. Kanemoru literally ducks it and then grabs it and pulls it off him. You could have done the exact same sequence, just a roll up, pull the tights, hold on to the ropes. Taichi and Zack, the golden, golden tech, dangerous techers, they don't look weak. They do not look weak because they got screwed. It was a roll up. He pulled the tights and held the bottom rope. It's, you know, you protected everyone there, but they didn't. They just did the DQ route. That felt very E esque. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can see your point right there. And in a way, you can kind of make it, it, it kind of can make Tai Chi kind of look like an imbecile because it's like Zach Sabre Jr. It's like, what are you doing, man? Like, we had the match. Like, what's, what's going on here, man? Like, it, kind of, you kind of put Zach Sabre Jr. in a hard place when you do something like that. You know, so it's like, as a tag team partner, kayfabe wise, it's like, okay, what are we doing here? You know, and, but maybe because since these teams are pairing off tomorrow maybe this feud isn't over because new japan no that's probably why they gave this finish to lk when we think about yeah, it yeah, because... but you could you could have done a roll-up finish and done the exact same thing that, that's what i'm trying you to say could have. you could have done the roll-up finish pull the tights do whatever rake the eye pull the tights hold on to the bottom rope whilst you know getting leverage on the pin and they could have done that but but they didn't and also what i don't like is how the ref rang the bell because he got hit yet early in the match Tamatonga pulled him out of the ring hard into the barricade, but that's fine. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, no. It's, and this is nothing away from the match. The match itself, building up to that, I was generally like, fuck me. I've forgotten how, obviously at Wrestle Kingdom they had a good match. Um, but here it was just like, oh, this is some really good shit. Like, this is what I want to wake up to every fucking morning. Some really good wrestling. And then the finish was just, oh, man. Because the thing is, if that was WWE, I would come on here and I'd say, I'd, you know, be critical so i think it's only fair that 
I, I don't know. I respect your opinion, and I get I get why you'd be okay with that. It just it pissed me off a little bit when they could have just done so many easier routes to actually get a clean a cleanish finish and get some heel heat, and the crowd would have booed. Hey, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, you know. And like I said, honestly, a DQ. Long story short, it's kind of a cop out in a way, you know. I, I can agree. It's kind of a, like uh, it's under because at one point in during that match, okay, I was just like, man, these guys are actually making these tag team titles mean something. I don't know if you felt like that, but I was like, dude, I didn't really. I'm not saying, oh my god, this is like the greatest tag team. I'm not saying that because it was a damn good match. Because you know there are better tag team matches, and there probably will be. But what I'm saying is, when it, like it was a point in this match when they're fighting for these titles, I was like, I haven't really felt. I ain't gonna say I haven't really felt importance because I think these teams, and you know, when they were there early part of the year, some of uh, what Finn Juice. I think a lot of those teams kind of were lending credit, you know, the Golden uh, Aces. Uh, I think a lot of those teams are lending credit to these tag team belts, and uh, I don't know they. Start feeling like a big deal. And then, like it was a part of this match. I'm like, man, these belts are almost can they can be kind of important again, you know? Is but then when you get that DQ finish, it's kind of you know, it's like, uh, well, maybe they're I, I, not. I, I, I can see the. I can like when you said earlier they want to carry on the rivalry. I can see them wanting to do that because there is realistically no other teams that are full time enough to actually challenge. But what you could have done the roll up, and then you could have just had a you know could have had Tai Chi. Uh, get the win on the um, on tomorrow's show. You could have had him get a win on one of the Road to Castle Attack shows, and then build up a Castle Attack match heading into New Japan Cup. But I also, I want to say I want all four of these boys in the New Japan Cup. Hopefully, they do a big New Japan Cup again this year because all four boys busted their ass. They did a really, really great job, and character work as well from Taichi. Like anyone who bashes Taichi is a fucking invalid. Um, that that guy. Oh man, when he put that glove on. It was absolutely great, great character work. It's absolutely phenomenal. I'm really, I think the past, you know, when we started this, um, doing the New Japan reviews, what, way back, I was one of Taichi's biggest detractors, should we say. I wasn't a big fan of him. But I'm, I've turned the corner. I, I think the guy is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Like, I think over the, like, over the span of when we've been doing these shows, I know the last, what, 2020, Yoshihashi's gotten, you know, a mi- immense amount of praise, which he should have. Yep. I don't see that same amount of praise being heaped on Taichi, and I don't know why, because for the most part, for the bulk of his heavyweight run, it's been pretty solid. Once he became a heavyweight, it was like, okay, like, nobody, like, it was funny because when he became a heavyweight, it's like, nobody's like, oh, they're not taking him seriously, da da da, Taichi, heavyweight, da da da, whatever. But once he became a heavyweight, I think that's when it kind of sunk in and kind of clicked for Taichi, at least in my honest opinion, because. He's had a lot of good stuff happen ever since he's went to heavyweight. He's had many rivalries with Naito. He's had a little short feud with Okada, which I still maintain he should have won. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, but you still kind of got to protect your big guy. So I, I definitely understand. But uh, no, Taichi's people talk about Yoshihashi, but Taichi's one of the most improved guys over the course of a few years in New Japan. And same with Tama Tonga here, because yeah. in. Sh- same with Tonga Loa, because, okay, we remember when Grills of Destiny were first kind of there, and it was kind of like, uh, Tonga Loa was definitely not where he is now. I'm not saying he's the, you know, five-star machine and putting out all those, but he's come a long way in his time in New Japan over here. And these guys, great, Davis Tecker's a great team. Grills of Destiny are one of the best teams in the world, too. And I just think that they don't get that praise a lot because, I hate to say it, they're not a, they're not internet friendly. They're not, you know... Hey, well, they're they're not real. I don't want to say interactive, but they don't really do. They do that Twitter stuff, but they don't really do it like maybe other teams would do. If you if you know if you kind of get what I'm saying, you know, like they don't really they're they're not really out there to be like, oh well, yeah, you know, Davey Meltz thinks we had a five. They don't really care about that. Like Tom Tonga don't care if Dave Meltzer thinks he have a five star match. He really doesn't. So, and I think with a certain fan base, they kind of hang on every word that that guy says. And Tom Tonga was like, no, fuck that. I don't care what he says. So I think that kind of put some people off. And I think that's why the Grizzly of Destiny aren't getting the praise that they probably should be getting. But same for both teams. But yeah, it's qualification fitness. I see what you mean. It's kind of like, eh. But the most important thing is the Iron Finger from Hell is back with its rightful owner. So that's the most important thing. Here. Ah, <laughs> the Iron Hand of Hell. I fucking love that, honestly. I, I wish everyone, if that you cannot watch this show in its entirety, and you're, you're struck for time. You've only got an hour spare. Uh, obviously, check out the main event in its entirety. This is a long one. But check out the last five minutes. Take away the DQ. Actually watching the character work from everyone. Like when Gato, uh, when Jado gets the fucking kendo stick and smacks him in the back and he kind of hulks up. Oh, it was fucking magic. Awesome, 
awesome stuff. I, 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 you know what I want? I want Tanahashi to retain against fucking Oka, whatever his name is. And I want to see Taichi versus Tanahashi for the Never Open Weight belt. Hmm, I wouldn't mind that. I, and, you know, we're, since we're going off of uh, what? Since Kota... Honestly, too, when I just thought about it, this is this is another inconsistency, inconsistency with New Japan here. If Remember how we're talking yesterday with how Okada's like, all right, I want to beat Evil because... He beat me in the New Japan Cup. You know, he pretty much accosted me, and he wants to go again. He went against Will Ospreay as well. Why hasn't Taichi been saying, like, hey, man, I beat the double champion Kota Ibushi in the New Japan Cup last year. I should, I should be getting a title shot. Like, he, they, they've been not really saying anything about that. Like, Taichi could say he earned, he's earned a title shot because he's like, I beat him last year. So now I didn't even beat this dude. I beat him. Dude, you know, like, dude, dude, ima- yeah, dude, imagine that. Imagine if, if, it, if at the end of, the, of, of tomorrow's show, yeah, you have Kota Ibushi defeating Sonata like it's gonna happen, um, and then you have, and then you have Taichi come out with the, who's been all show. Well, not all show during his match took everyone out with the fucking iron iron claw of doom, and he comes out with the iron hand and bam, he just takes out Kota Ibushi, stands over it, holds up the world title in one hand and the claw in the other. Oh, book it, book it, book it. Do you do? Because if you wanted to, you could literally have. Or you could have done it. You could have had Ibushi essentially defend the title against all three heavyweight members of Suzuki Gun if you wanted to. But you know, hey, what what do I know? I don't. And think I'm about not... it. So that's, that's for Castle Tech, yeah. So what if you do Ta- uh, Tai Chi and uh, Ibushi at Castle Attack, and then have a post match kind of have Suzuki stare down with Ibushi, and then you got another challenger in Suzuki and Ibushi, which is something we said they should have done on the tomorrow's New Beginning show, being Suzuki. I, I think Tai Chi's at the point where. This claw gimmick with the the blesses Cotton Zaizuka left him, or kind of got stole from him, but could be a great way for him to become mega over. They should start selling those fucking hands on, on New Japan shop. I think it's great. I think it's fucking great. Good job, Tai Chi. Hell, I want one, job. okay? <laughs> I <laughs> want one now. Order, 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 exactly, order, order, fucking frame it and put it on the fucking shelf. Like, it, it, at some point, because I don't think it gets talked about enough, because it's like a weird thing in wrestling whenever you get these kind of like mythical objects like you know like what like the Undertaker's urn uh, what Jimmy Hart's megaphone you know stuff like that and now you got Azuka or Taichi's iron finger from hell <laughs> you know it's, it's just it's, like it's, hey honestly it's amazing it's absolutely amazing and I, I, I'm not I'm like one of those people who like kind of enjoy serious aspects of wrestling but when like I prefer that over the Fiend stuff because the Fiend stuff confuses me because it changes all the time but this this is great. Like when he puts that on, it's like a comic book. When he puts it on, he becomes this mega superhero that's just indestructible. I want to see a good run here. I want to see him fucking push, uh, not push to the moon. You know, yeah, put him in a world title match. Don't have to win it. You know, you can have the the claw of doom fucking taken away from him, and Abushi gets the win. But just really push this guy because the crowd for that match was fucking electric. Obviously, they can't make any noise. But for a crowd that couldn't make any physical noise out of their mouths, the the venue was electric. Shout out to the crowd tonight. They, they really helped the show. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. And speaking of the crowd and <clears throat> being electric, it brings us to the main event, man. This main event for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship right here. We have the champion, the reigning champion, just winning the title at Wrestle Kingdom, Hiromu Takahashi, attempting to make his first defense of the title he just won. Not really just won. It's been about a month. One half of a Puggy 3K <clears throat> representative of Chaos. We have Show right here and LK. This match was a fucking banger, dude. And you know what was the best thing about this match, in my honest opinion? The best thing about this match, at least the last time, it's been a while since I can remember. <clears throat> this match was not wrestled like a stereotypical junior heavyweight wrestling match in 2021. And what I mean by that is when you you hear junior heavyweights, you have the you, you, you think it's a task for this label of Oh, we're going to be doing, you know, planches outside to the ring. We're going to be doing uh, hurricanes off the top rope. We're going to be doing moon sauce and all that. To me, LK, this match was literally wrestled like a heavyweight match just for the junior heavyweight title. That's how this match was wrestled. Yeah, they they didn't wrestle like a spot fest. They went out there. They told a great story. They took time. And to be honest with you, the first kind of fifteen minutes, I was I was anticipating kind of this twenty minute balls to the wall non-stop not spot fest but balls to the wall crazy fast-paced stuff and they didn't go that route so for the first kind of 15 
10 15 minutes or so i was kind of like all right what's going on here kind of i'm, I'm expecting a banger and this kind of isn't it but then as the match went on and it went on and it went on it was just like a traditional new japan main event where they go 30 was well, 35 36 minutes the longest IWGP junior heavyweight championship match of all time and it was it was absolutely incredible uh so some of the stuff they did and and commentary english commentary with uh, el fantasmo and kevin kelly obviously we'll get on what happened after the match but they did such a great job like el fantasmo saying you know the lights are brighter um so you know these guys need to take a lot of time which allows them to sell and tell an even better story Ah, oh, the match oh it's just a really good match if you had to go on like the star system if, if you're one of those people you got i reckon four and a half uh, four and a half, four yeah. and three quarters. Really, really, really good match. Super um, high quality here. Super high, high quality. quality. Like this stuff. And credit to both of these guys, okay? Because these both of these guys, because like you said, they uh, pretty much we had in our mind. Well, not us, because you know we don't think like that. But th- these guys maybe had in a lot of people's mind, like you said, they're going to go balls to the wall. They're going to like crash into each other. Going to be a twenty minute. It's pretty much car collision. Which there, this match was very physical. I'm not saying this match is not because it was very physical, but I'm, it wasn't like the car collisions you would expect from a Hiromu Takahashi match. These guys pretty much showed that hey, if you and I think they did this on purpose. I don't know if I don't know how New Japan does their you know who, who who's running the matches or whatnot, but you know how WWE has their match you know agents or whatever, and they have you know they're designated with whatever match. I don't know if New Japan has that, but if they don't have that, and it's pretty much just up to ghettos. It's like all right, so. Rumble's going to win, but, you know, it's up to you guys to pretty much, like, work in what happens in between there with the time we're giving you. I think it was these dudes that were just like, you know what? We're not going to wrestle the typical junior heavyweight style. We're going to wrestle this match not only for right now, but this match is pretty much going to help both of these guys a year and a half, two years down the line because it just showed the higher ups in New Japan. These guys can wrestle that heavyweight style if need be. They can, they can do the style that makes that runs a successful New Japan main event that New Japan has been pretty much so successful secular, so successful of running. They said we can do this car crash style, but if you want us and you can have us in the main event, we can do this style as well. And I also see, and this is kind of goes back to the whole Prince Devitt thing of why Bullet Club was even formed, LK, because I look at stuff like this, I'm like, man, it's just and I'm like, it's just a shame that both these guys are just like relegated because of their quote unquote weight class. You know what I mean? It's just like, all right, well, they because they were like Roma wants the main event to wrestle kingdom, the Tokyo Dome, the junior heavyweight title, which I think is amazing. That's fucking great. I'm just like, damn, why does it have to be like, oh, it's such like a big task that he is main eventing the Tokyo Dome with the junior heavyweight title. If the title is booked correctly, I feel like any title can main event. Well, you know, whatever, you know, yeah, so they like, do a why? vote, don't they? They do a vote. They do a vote on yeah. what, what match should be the main event normally when they only have a uh, one night card and they're not doing these kind of, you know, if you win this one, then you go on to face the guy on the fifth and this and that. But yeah, I, comple- I completely agree. Um, this is kind of everything you'd expect. And like you said, an Okada match, the way it was paced, it was paced like an Okada match of Tanahashi and Naito, like a really experienced main event wrestler and these guys who, yeah, Hiromi does get main events, you know, fairly often at Korokan, etc., but he doesn't get those big time 35 plus minute main events very often. So for them to be able to go out there and deliver what they did and told such a great story, it's, ah, you got to tilt your cap. You got to tilt your cap. This is a game. Yep. And, and like we said yesterday, show can lose, but kind of gain credibility and kind of star power. Cause he hung with Hiromu, who is the golden boy, <coughs> excuse me, who is the golden boy of the division. He hung with him. So I, I thought that show looked great in defeat. And then what happened post match? What happened post match? And he led up to it pretty much like he was leading up to it towards the end of the match. And you really think I thought he was just, you know, you know, when you hear stuff on commentary, OK, especially with heel commentators, you think it's just like lip service, you know, like he's like, man, I'm going to go and I'm about to go kick Karomu's head off, man. You know, El Fantasma, you think he's just, just being salty at the moment because he's like verbally rooting against Hiromu when this match is happening, by the way. He's like, you know what? I never thought I'd root for show, but he's in there with Hiromu and I can't stand Hiromu. So. He's building that up actually the whole match as this is happening. So uh, he's like, yeah, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kick Karamu's head off. And I thought he's just having lip service. But no, he goes in there and prepares to get ready to kick uh, Romu Takashi's head off. And once he goes in there, actually his tag team partner comes in and they're starting. They're st- no, he, he came in, the El Fantasmo. And I think Bushi comes in to knock El Fantasmo off of Romu. Then that's when Taiji Samori comes in. Then he tries to, to hit uh, Romu with the sudden death. Romu counters it. 
and he's pretty much saying he hates Hiromu. He wants he is going to leave Japan with the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. But then Hiromu, okay, to his credit, he says, "Well, you know what? Since you want to challenge for my title, it uh, looks like you guys have a couple of titles there yourselves that Bushi and I would like to challenge for." So. We were correct that the matches earlier had implications of the junior heavyweight tag and singles title, but we didn't know it was going to be what we didn't know what players are going to be involved, and it really wasn't the players that we thought. <laughs> no, um, at least it involved the winner of the Bushi and Master Wato match, so it's kind of not like that match was for nothing. Um, but yeah, I, I was uh, what I loved as well is El Fantasma is like I'm retiring, I'm retiring, like making it a big deal, even though he's retired like three times at this point from commentary. Um, he does such a fucking great job of commentary. Him and Kevin Kelly. And I loved Kevin Kelly like, sit down, sit down, what are you doing? Like, he does such a great job. Kevin Kelly, in my opinion, is the best pro wrestling announcer in the world, you English speaking right now. Uh, honestly, Absolutely. the guy can do show solo. He can be the baby face to the heel. We can call it down the middle. The guy is fucking incredible. Absolutely incredible. Does a phenomenal job. Not praised enough. Um, but the build, like you said... Not only did you have the story of the match going on, you had the story of El Phantasma on commentary, really digging at Hiromu. So you kind of feel that when El Phantasma goes in there, you feel the hatred from Phantasma. And when he cut the promo, um, it was like the stuff he was saying on commentary about how oh, Hiromu's the golden boy, he's only pushed because of the office. And when he talks about the company being bullshit, it felt like it was a shoot. Obviously, it's a work. Yeah. He's been told to, but his delivery was that great. He's that much of a douchebag, like character-wise. It was. It felt legit. It felt like a shoot. So fucking magnificent work from all all parties. And the one thing about it be feeling like a shoot, it's kind of partially true. Hiromu is the golden boy of the junior heavyweight division, so it's true. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's reality turned into wrestling. It's fucking magic. Yeah. So El Fantasmo shoot and kayfabe wise validity in his points. <laughs> Absolutely. But what what what? So so we had um. The Bush- so we had post match like you said he had El Fantasma come out go to take out Hiromu Bushi comes out to make the save now I'm thinking in my head at this point I'm thinking no is Bushi gonna turn on Hiromu not join the Bullet Club okay. I was like is Bushi gonna turn here and we're gonna get Bushi versus Hiromu one on one that's what I was thinking but they didn't and they kind of they teased an El Fantasma and Hiromu match but at the same time they did the teasing of the junior tag titles with Bushi and Hiromu as well as Phantasmo and Ishimori. So it's kind of like they tease two things. I think they're going to do both tile shots on the uh, Castle Attacker tour. They should, and <clears throat> I know this is an early prediction. I wouldn't be mad if the titles switch, if either one of these titles switch hands, because I've always wanted Hiromu and Bushi to hold those tag straps, and at some point, El Phantasmo probably needs a junior heavyweight title run, so... Absolutely. A hundred percent. Um, I want... ELP, El Fantasma, whatever the fuck you want to call him, to win that junior belt because now with the English commentary story side, yeah, there really is hatred and beef and the build up for Fantasma and Hiromu will be magnificent. And imagine a build up of Hiromu and Bushi taking his junior heavyweight tag title from him. Imagine how pissed off he's going to be, how much more of a douchebag he's going to be. Oh, I think that could be gold. I think that could actually be gold. I'm ready for it, and El Fantasma might be the guy that I think you should probably have going into the best of the Super Junior as the champion. I think he's probably the guy you should have that is. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. And I think, you know, next year, hopefully, um, we get a rematch at Wrestle Kingdom for the belt between Fantasma and Hiromu, because I think they're the two biggest stars in the junior division. Um, just the way Fantasma is, it's just the guy's incredible. I, cannot, I can't understand if I go on Twitter and see any negative thoughts. Because the guy in character is fucking amazing. Nah, he got, yeah, that, he, he got that character work down to a T right now. And yeah, man, I'm just excited to see this <clears throat> tag team title match between these guys. Tomorrow, we're excited for the Never Open Weight Trios match, which if you have not listened to, we did preview that. So go ahead and check that video out after this one if you have not listened to that yet. Because yeah, we have that talented up on there. But uh, yeah, we got the show tomorrow. Okay. One of the least most impactful uh, storyline built heavyweight title matches in a long, long time. More excited. Who would ever thought we'd be more excited for the trios title match than a heavyweight title match? Come on. like this. <laughs> yeah. And like that doesn't mean when we're going to come on tomorrow, we're going to be negative Nelly about. We're just talking about the build. The match itself is probably going to be very good. And maybe now hear me out because we're so lackluster on the build. The match could just be good. 
but we'll be thinking it's very good because our expectations and interest are so low. So they could be pulling a fast one. We could be coming on here praising them like a motherfucker tomorrow. So we've got to be careful on that one. Because, you know, there's people who probably don't watch the Road 2 shows, which if you don't, you know, fair play to you. It's lots of content, lots of pro wrestling out there in the world. It's kind of like... You know, they, they haven't watched the build, so they're just watching the match. We'll be like, oh, the match is all right. But because we watch the build and how uninvested we are, we might be like, oh, matches, matches, the match is really fucking great. When in reality, it was just a solid match. We just had no expectation. It's like when you watch a WWE pay per view and you turn it on, you're like, oh, this ain't going to be, this is going to be uh, fun. And then it's just an okay show, but you're like, oh, that was great. That was great. I wasn't bored. I wasn't depressed. Like, it's just great. It's just great. Um, before we wrap up, there is a couple of live comments in there. Um, I figured out the system so I, we can actually stream live. So me and D do some shows. Um, we can actually live stream once again. So touch wood, we can keep rocking and rolling. We have a uh, Tom Zilla in the uh, in the live chat. Uh, he says Doiki versus Jada would be the greatest minus five star match ever. Dude, I, I was literally going to say when Doiki came out and um, they did some stuff with with Gado, uh, Jado, sorry. I'm I, I honestly think they're going to have a one on one match, and I think you touched upon that yesterday. Uh, Doik and Gado, Jado having a one-on-one match. Yeah, it's going. It's got to happen at this point. They've been calling each other out post-match so many times. It's got. It's got to happen now. Yeah, it'll be. It'll be. A, it'll be a funny spectacle. And then uh, uh, Tronzilla also says ELP is gold. Um, I agree. Oh, yeah. On honestly, and I'm. I'm glad every everyone can uh, agree to that. That El Fantasmo is fucking magic. Guy is amazing. He, he he could be my favorite wrestler in New Japan, Dion. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna lie. He might be my favorite wrestler in New Japan. Him and him and uh, Taichi at the minute really rocking rocking my world. I would say probably my my top three right now are probably I'm gonna say like it's either it's I'm gonna say it's a tie between this because I, character work once again. It's a tie between Shingo or Great Okan, uh, Naito, and honestly, Jay White, dude, Jay White is killing it right now. He's yeah. so good. Yeah, there's some really good stuff, and it's 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 kind of weird. We're kind of at this point where they're not kind of shoving, not shoving is the wrong word. They're not really pushing Okada, Naito, Tanahashi like they normally do. So we're kind of getting this fresh mix of talent, and it's great. It's a great, great time. Really good stuff. They're pushing the young and guys. Absolutely. And do LK. I just thought of something to where before we wrap this up. To where they can, if and this, because we're talking about potential challengers for Abushi, and you know we brought up guys before who have challenged for the heavyweight title, and guys who haven't challenged for the title in a while, and it'd be interesting. We brought up a couple guys from Suzuki Gun, you know we, you know we brought up Suzuki, we brought up Zack Saber Jr., we brought up Taiji. I just thought about a guy who could challenge, and he's in a position to challenge for it. He's not doing a damn thing right now. He's fresh off a of victory, uh, off a brutal no disqualification match, man. Well, how kind of tight would it be if Abushi celebrating in the ring? He's, you know, pretty much holding all the belts up in the ring, you know, just doing his thing. Then out of the camera shot, just out of nowhere, you just see him catch the hidden blade from Will Ospreay. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. Right. But then, but then, but then I, I'm expecting Osprey to have a big New Japan Cup run. So will it affect him if he loses to Abushi? is the thing? Could he? Can he afford uh, a loss? I, I think he could. I think he could, he could uh, lose to Ibushi. He's his first time challenged for the title. He last time these guys faced off, I believe. Uh, I think they faced off in the G1 climax. I got to see who won that match. But he's beaten the boot. Yeah, he's beaten Ibushi for the never point eight never open weight title before. So he's proven he can at least beat Ibushi. And I got to look back see who won that match. But I don't think it hurt him because you could still have him drop that match to Will Ospreay or to Kota Bushi at Castle Attack and still have a solid New Japan Cup run. He doesn't, unless you have him, if he, if he wins the cup, don't have him, don't throw him at him at Castle Attack. But if, New, if Will Ospreay's not winning the cup, I wouldn't mind him challenging at Castle Attack. Yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of options. Let's just hope they pick one that isn't a Sonata rematch. That's, that's where we get a time, 60 minute time limit draw. They, they go out and get at Castle Attack. Shit, I'll say this too, LK, and he's my favorite wrestler. I don't, Naito don't need a rematch right now either. It's too soon. He, right? Just being real. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to see Naito and Ibushi not for a way a while. Now that could be. Nope. And the thing is, he's just he, uh, he maybe I don't know what kind of he can do because he's kind of like his you know use the word destiny obviously with Destino, but he's kind of sole focus has been the world title for so long. He's kind of at the point where Okada was for a while, where he's just kind of like nothing to do. Like he's in special single, he like he's involved with stuff with fucking Tomiyaki Homma. Like all respect to him, but you know he went from main event in Tokyo Dome to being in there with Hon Honma and the 
worst feud in pro wrestling right now, Kobushi and Sonata. So it's kind of, like, <laughs> it's kind of like, what do you do? Ah. Oh. Yeah, well, he's well, kind of in that position. In that position, I think uh, Tanahashi was after he dropped the uh, heavyweight title to Okada back at Wrestle Kingdom Ten. I think he's kind of in that position because it's kind of like Okada, or I mean uh, Tanahashi, really it took him a bit to find his footing. The only reason he was even able to find any footing is because Shinsuke Nakamura left and that put him in the IC feud with Kenny Omega. So it's like if he didn't Nakamura didn't even leave, what would Tanahashi even have done at that point right then? You know, like it's because he was kind of like, all right, what am I? doing now so it's it's pretty it's when you're an established veteran and you've had it's kind of when your title program your main title program for the most part is over it's kind of like what do they do with you now <laughs> like exactly it's it's it's, it's sod store isn't it um also chonzilla says when you turn on new japan world shingo is on the front picture gonna mean he's in the main event picture soon slash now i think that's a great yeah. that's a great point um stuff like that does matter because obviously being on like the poster is like really important uh, for you know company perception like fans if they turn on when they go to new japan website or new japan world and they see that they're gonna you know if you're a new viewer you're gonna be like oh you know who's this guy they're gonna view him as a bit more of a star i would love that imagine that then so shingo's just been put on the front of new japan world imagine if Art? shingo imagine if shingo who's obviously just lost to tanahashi which is a bit of an issue but imagine if shingo came out and challenged kota Ibushi. Shingo was one of the dudes to where if he was to challenge Kota Ibushi, I wouldn't just automatically assume it's an easy defense like, oh, Kota, Kota Ibushi's retained. And I'm like, Shingo could beat him, actually. They could put book Shingo to beat Kota Ibushi. Like. Yeah, or at least have him, you know, give him a title match. Because, I mean, I, I see Shingo as more beatable than Sonata. Because what you could do is you could have, you know, Sonata and Ibushi have Shingo come out to kind of, you know, stamp on the mat, kind of like pump the crowd up for, for Sonata. Because obviously both in LIJ... And then post match, you can kind of have you know Shingo go in there and be like, "Look, you know you beat Sonata, but you ain't gonna beat me." Just simple, easy story. And I hope they do that. I, I honestly, I hope they do that. It's such a great shout. Shingo is one of those guys who um, we just kind of haven't talked about because obviously it feels like a long, a, a way a while ago with Shingo versus Tanahashi in that banger because um, there's been so many New Japan shows in between. But Man, that would be great. Same as Osprey. Your shout on Osprey, the shout on Suzuki. There's so much they can do. But man, I just pray tomorrow that we get a good fucking match. I just pray. I'm actually checking right now to see if uh because they wrestled in G one, did Shingo and uh Shingo and Kenta not Kenta. I wanna keep calling Kenta damn it. Shingo and Kota Bushi wrestled in G one and I'm trying to see who Kota Bushi actually beat with Osprey last year, so he might not have a right to challenge. I'm trying to see if uh, Shingo actually beat Kota Bushi in G1 because if he did, then he we might be onto something here because he actually if he beat him, then Sonata didn't beat him in G1. Like Shingo actually did. If that's the I, I case, didn't, I didn't even think it it'll, it'll matter in a way because because Shingo could just be ringside um, for the match, come out later on to pump Sonata up, pump the crowd up. He could come out for his support. No, nah, I think you're right. I think that's what will happen. Like, I think we'll get probably Sonata or, you know, Kota Bushi winning and, you know, him checking on Sonata, that being Shingo Takagi. Then they kind of like do a little thing where he kind of looks back and looks up at Kota Bushi. Then they kind of have the face off deal. Yeah, that'd, that'd be great. That'd be great. There's lots of options they could do. They're kind of at a point now where they can create some really fresh matches uh, for the belt and have some fresh challenges, which is a great position to be in. I just hope they don't go down the same route of kind of a Sonata feud. No, I think that feud would be very much different. Um, Shingo's a very different guy. If they go that route, Shingo's more, I hate to say it because he's a drag, he's more fiery, for the lack of a better term. And I definitely think there would be more physical interactions if he was to be paired off with, with uh, Shingo Takagi as, as opposed to what he, we've had with Sonata. Did, um, good point. Uh, but did, did, did you say Shingo beat Ibushi in the G1 or not? I'm still like, dude, they got these, like, plays so weird because I'm looking on, of course, the grand total wikipedia right here so of course these they're placed very weird because <laughs> um, uh chonzilla says i think uh i think no shingo beat abushi in the g1 as in i think they didn't or i'm confused to see if they he didn't or he did um but yeah if i mean like like we said even if uh, even, sorry, break break my fucking thing even if um shingo didn't beat him in the g1 they can still do that story of like like we said, so either either way, 
I'm just really excited for t- for tomorrow's show. It's kind of a good little string for New Japan that they got going on. They got a bit of momentum. Yep. Shingo won that match. Okay, so 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 I I think then we got Shingo versus Kota Ibushi tomorrow, uh, but not tomorrow at Castle Attack. I think that's a good call, man. He he beat Ibushi. Uh, he can come in there and kind of help his ally J homie out after he loses. It just makes sense. And damn, he, if you think about it, if and if if, he, if Shingo was the next one up, then quiet as it's kept. Kota Bushi would have just pretty much went through the heavyweight guys of LIJ. He just took the belt off of Naito. He would have beaten Sonata, and he potentially would have beaten Shingo Takagi. So it's like, okay. This is where we get Bushi. You just beat Mastawata, come out and challenge after. Uh, no, but it's, it's the thing is, though, Castle Tack in the grand scheme of things, it's a bit, you know, re- respectably big show, but it's not that massive show. It's kind of that filler in between New Beginning and the New Japan Cup. So by giving right. it to a guy like Shingo, you're putting credibility on him just by being in a heavyweight title match because people perceive him in that way. So then he could have a, he doesn't have to win the New Japan Cup, but he could have a good lengthy reign. And then, bam, heading to the G1, he's got, and Dominion, he's got loads and loads of momentum. And two, Shingo's a guy to where if, if you felt inclined, I'm saying, not saying New Japan would feel inclined. New, Shingo's a dude to where a shock win over Ibushi really wouldn't be that of a sh- much of a shock to where it would be maybe a shock that there's a title change, but it's not a shock that he would have beaten Ibushi. No, and like you said, then he could just have the winner of the New Japan Cup take out Shingo, especially when we're at the point where the buildings aren't full 100% capacity because of obviously what's going on in the world. So in a way, you can kind of, like they did last year when they just took a chance on evil, we're at the point where you know attendance isn't really important because they don't need to drive sales to, for example, Dominion of 30,000. They don't have to drive ticket sales of 30,000. They only have to drive ticket sales of 10, 12,000, which is doable because of the the bigness, if that's a word, of the actual New Japan pressing brand. So I think they could really take a chance, you know, put the belt on Shingo, see if it works, see if he connects and just kind of build it. Because that's what they did with Jay White. They took a chance. They took a chance on Jay White and look at him now. Star. Yep. Superstar. So, you know, take a chance on Shingo. And then you've got, you know, all the fresh as fuck possibilities of Shingo Okada. You can then do Shingo Tanahashi because Tanahashi could be like, you beat me, you know, I beat you. And then Tanahashi's a challenger. They could do so much. And then imagine Osprey and Shingo again if Osprey wins a New Japan Cup. Oh, just pre cummed in my pants. Like, yeah, man. And I know because people are talking about, well, who's going to be. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I try not to die right here. As you look at people um, who have, because now we're at that point of where where all the New Japan's big guys have held that belt. Now, if you think about it, Evil held the big belt. Naito, Okada, of course, Tanahashi, Jay White, Ibushi. These big guys have all held the big belt now. So now we're at the, to a point to where who's going to be the next new guy to hold the belt? Who's going to be the guy to? All right, well, is it going to be Shingo Takagi? Is it going to be Will Osprey? Is it going to be a guy like Sonata? Like it's now in that to me in that next class of guys to where it's like, all right, well. Because we know Tanahashi's probably not winning that belt again. No. Hell, my Naito might not even be winning that belt again. The way they kind of have him positioned, it's kind of weird. Um, Okada's probably the best candidate out of these guys. But now when I think about it, I'm just like, Shh, you got so many f- ch- choices, dude. Do you even want to go back to Okada right now? You don't even have to. Because like you said, we're in this era, era of it's not very much attendance. And it's pretty much se- selling off the name value itself. Essentially, okay, you can book your wrestling program like a video game if you wanted to. And I don't mean to just, just use these guys ton. I mean, you could pretty much put whoever you want in main event. It really doesn't matter because it's not like you have to be like, oh, we got to sell 50,000 seats. Or, you know, like you said, it's not like you have to do that right now. Absolutely. So I really do hope they kind of, you know, really go for it because something will stick. You could try, They've obviously tried it with Sonata and it's not stuck, but they could try it with Shingo. They could try it with Taichi. You know, they could try it with Will Ospreay. They can really go out of their way to really try and create some more stars so that when th- then when this fucking bullshit is all finished, it's all fucking over with, and everything can go back to normal. And with the attendance, they're going to be perceived as stars, and you've now got a, a G1, and you've got where everyone's established. You haven't got those guys in there that are just, you know, oh, they're going to take a loss, they're going to take a loss. It'll be, I actually don't know who's going to fucking win this one because he's a former challenger, he's a former champion. Like, I, I think they're in a really great position. I really fucking hope they capitalize, man. Really hope. 
One hundred percent. Like they have a chance to mix up and be a little fresh. Like they did a little bit in twenty twenty. If they can do it in twenty twenty one, you're not hoping for some variety. You know what I mean? So hey, let's fingers crossed, man. Hopefully we get some of the stuff that we're talking about. Because if they do some of that stuff, I think it'd be pretty good and pretty you know successful for New Japan. So absolutely. But everyone, please check out the 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 show tomorrow being the uh, new beginning. Uh, in Hiroshima Night 2 on NGPWL.com. No affiliation at all. It's just check the show out because we'll be reviewing it. Um, I don't know when, but we'll be, we'll be reviewing it. We'll let, we'll let everyone know. But um, just everyone, in summary, go check out that fucking Hiromu Takashi and show match. Yep. Uh, I know he went a bit off track talking about kind of tomorrow. Um, I think so, the thing is, Sonata Nobushi, um, it's been one of our least favorite builds in recent memory yet we've talked about it for so many fucking hours of our lives man it's absolutely hilarious i think it's because we just want to see what's what's next because we assume that abushi's defending against sonata and <clears throat> i think the possibilities open up once we get past this defense and we just kind of really want to see what's next i feel yeah absolutely and then the final comment of the night in the live chat um everyone we will be going live uh, more often actually doing it as a live stream so please hit the uh, notification button to know and get a notification on when we are going live uh the final comment of the night chonzilla says with the u.s title pitch heating up they could put naito in the mix that's a great idea yeah. man naito and kento could could really work really really could they could and I mean, we maybe shouldn't be so soon to think they're going to take this belt off John Moxley, considering what's you know what's going on and everything. But I think they probably should, considering that belt hasn't been in Japan for like a year. But hey, <laughs> but then again, <laughs> they're putting a lot of emphasis on the New Japan Strong. Uh, they're doing lots of promotion. They're yeah. Even you know, so even going on you know Pluto TV on Thursdays now. Imagine if you know, like you said, Kenta wins, but he just stays in America and just does the New Japan Strong stuff. Like just because he wins the belt doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be in Japan. Because obviously, COVID restrictions and everything. I, I, my opinion, that U.S. title should stay in U.S. Uh, you know, ha- come come over for Wrestle Kingdom. Maybe have the champion come over in the G1. But I want to see that fucking title, the IWGP U.S. title, stay in the New Japan USA sub brand and build that New Japan Strong Show, which was a good show this week, uh, last week, sorry, and build that around that because, you know, you can have some continuity with the storylines, kind of build uh, programs around the belt. I think there's a great opportunity to kind of really establish a, a U.S. market so when New Japan come over with the main brand tour, they can do some good business. <clears throat> I think that's a good shout. I really do. Having a regional title is not a bad thing. It's pretty, it's like, hey, look, it's kind of like a subsidiary. You know, it's like you're the champion right here. Like you said, we can utilize you for big shows when we need to. But for all intents and purposes, this is your home base. This is where you're going to operate. You're going to be the champion of this brand. So, no, I can I can see that. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But I, I say we've uh, beat this drum to death. Sonata Ibushi tomorrow. Thank you, everyone in the live chat. Thank you, Tronzilla. Like you said, we'll be going live more in the future. Uh, what what time will we plan on so everyone uh, listening uh, knows when we plan on going live tomorrow? Well, I've, uh, I I don't think I have any cleaning gigs tomorrow afternoon or after my, my uh, morning job. So I don't think I have any cleaning gigs. So uh, my evening should be, for the most part, pretty open. So Magical. So it'll be in the evening sometime US time. So hit the notification button to know when we are going live. So wrap this bad boy up, Dion, and let's take it home. You know what it is, guys. SOS Wrestling Network, guys. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And the price of subscription, I don't know if anybody told you this, is free 99 Tell a friend to tell a friend. We up out of here.